So we know the coefficient of drag is the key parameter in determining the drag on an object. So we're going to spend the next couple lectures talking about different things that affect the coefficient of drag. It's really a function of a number of dimensionless parameters, including shape, possibly the Reynolds number, possibly the Mach number, Froude number, and relative roughness. Any of those can have a big impact on coefficient of drag. Um, shape dependence is probably the greatest and has the biggest impact on the coefficient of drag. This is a huge topic and I'm just going to touch on it briefly. Um, let's start by talking about streamlining. So streamlining is when you design an object to offer the lowest resistance to a fluid. So if we look at this biker, you can see two modifications to the bike that are not typical. That helmet he's wearing and the, um, the wheels are solid wheels, they don't have spokes on them. Let's focus on the helmet. Um, if you notice, there's most of the changes to the helmet are really on the back end. The front end is, is smooth, smoother than a typical bike helmet, but you'll notice there's, it's still pretty blunt, it's pretty flat, whereas the back end has this tail that, that projects backward from the object. And this is a key component of streamlining. So that changes to the back end are typically much more important than to the front end. And we'll, we'll spend some time talking about that in this lecture. So for example, for a sphere, at a Reynolds number of 10 to the fifth, the coefficient of drag is 0.5. And I looked that up off that figure we saw in the last lecture. But if you look at a streamlined sphere, coefficient of drag is 0 0.04. This is a 92% reduction in drag just by extending the back end of that object, which is pretty amazing that you can get that much change in drag just by adding more material to your object. Um, and the reason the back end is so important is that the front end we're going to have a high pressure and there's nothing we can really do about it. You know, a misconception is that you want it to be pointy in the front so that the object cuts through the fluid. And that's just not true at all. What's, what happens at the back end is really most important. What you'll find out is that um, the pressure distribution um, because drag is dominated by the pressure distribution and not the shear force, it's not a matter of cutting through the fluid. It's a matter of creating a pressure distribution that's favorable to you. And on the front end, there's really not much you can do about having high pressure in the front. Even if you make it pointy, you're still going to have that same stagnation point in the front. But on the back end, you can really affect how the fluid flows around the object and save yourself considerable drag. Okay, that's about all I'm going to be able to talk about with shape dependence. Again, it's very complicated. It's very application specific. So when you get, get a job and you're working on something where streamlining is important, you'll learn from the experts in your field what is important in your field. <clears throat> it's useful to take a look at Reynolds number dependence. Um, this coefficient of drag can vary greatly with the Reynolds number. And we've seen this in this figure. And we're going to talk about all these different regions now. You can see over this huge range in Reynolds number, you get about a um, four, four order of magnitude difference in um, coefficient of drag value, which is, which is quite significant. So starting at the slowest flow, way over to the left there on the figure, <clears throat> this is described as creeping flow. You can see the lines are fairly linear here. In fact, there's even a linear equation there for the um, smooth sphere. And so we're talking about Reynolds numbers less than one. And the way this fluid, this flow is described is, is the flow just wraps around the object. And it's perfectly symmetric. And there's no boundary layer separation. The, the fluid wraps around the object perfectly. And there are no real pressure distributions formed, or at least the pressure distributions are insignificant compared to the shear stress forces of the fluid rubbing against the object. 
So shear forces dominate. Um, pressure effects are minimal. And if you actually, if you tried to streamline this object, you'd, you might actually get a higher drag because since pressure is insignificant, streamlining doesn't benefit you in any way. And in fact, you're increasing the surface area or object, which will probably increase the drag because you'll have more shear force. The other thing that's strange about this, if you think about the previous figure, the Reynolds number or the coefficient of drag was decreasing as the Reynolds number increased. That may seem strange if you think about it. What that's saying is the coefficient of drag is decreasing as the velocity increases. So I just want to point out not to be confused by that. Don't mix up coefficient of drag with drag itself. Drag is a function of coefficient of drag but it's also got the velocity squared term in there. So with an increasing velocity, you're going to see um, an increasing drag, even though the coefficient of drag might go down. We can describe the coefficient of drag in this creeping flow region with simple linear equations, and your book has a, has a table with some simple objects. We can calculate the coefficient of drag directly. Now as we increase in velocity and we move down this figure, we start to form our first um, boundary layer separation, which has a huge impact on drag. So this is what the flow around the object looks like. It's around a Reynolds number of 10. And what happens is as the flow goes around this object, it is not able to follow the contours of the object. The flow field actually peels off of the object because the momentum carries it past the object rather than wrapping around it. It just it simply just can't make that sharp turn back to the center of the, of the ball. And as it peels off, what happens is you get this separation bubble. You get an eddy which forms on the back end of the object. And it's in this eddy where you get a very low pressure. So the, the source of drag here, or the coefficient of drag, the reason we have a high coefficient of drag here is that that eddy is actually, that low pressure is actually sucking the object backwards. So it's not so much a matter of cutting through the fluid in front of you, it's preventing this low pressure from forming behind you, which sucks you backwards. And this is where streamlining plays a huge role. If you simply stretch that object and extend it, you can make it so that the fluid doesn't peel off, so the fluid stays in contact with the object all the way to the end of it, and then you don't form these eddies and these low pressure regions behind it. As we increase in velocity, this problem continues and it gets worse. Um, around a Reynolds number of 100, you start to form oscillating Kármán vortexes. And what happens is the, those eddies on the back side of the object, so again, the fluid can't make the turn, it peels off from the object, you form these eddies and these low pressure regions behind the object, sucking the object backward. But now the eddies have gotten big enough that they become unstable can't have an eddy on both sides because they are too big. So a large eddy forms on one side and it peels off and then a large eddy forms on the opposite side and then that one peels off. And this continues back and forth forming this, causing this oscillation. And you can actually see this in some objects. If you have like a sign that's being blown in the wind, you can see it um, oscillate. You can see it twist back and forth and that's because of these vortexes alternating on either back side of the object. There's a video in the, um, on the Blackboard site that you can look at where you can see this. And again, streamlining is going to have a huge impact here. If you stretch out the back side of that object, the fluid won't peel off of it and um, you won't form these, these eddies and these low pressures regions. As we continue at higher velocities, now we get into turbulence. So we begin to form a turbulent boundary layer. 
This occurs around a Reynolds number of 10 to the fourth. <clears throat> and you have a turbulent region forming behind the object and it forms a wide turbulent wake which has pretty high um, drag component associated with it. It's Again, there are these back eddies and these low pressure regions and streamlining would again greatly reduce the coefficient of drag here because um, that turbulent region would just be off the tip of the object the point rather than that big back end. You would greatly reduce the size of your turbulent wake. And then finally there's this strange little feature in this figure where you have a sudden drop in the coefficient of drag and it's a significant drop. It's, al it's almost uh, a full order of magnitude decrease in coefficient of drag. And what's happening here is we get the formation of a turbulent boundary layer. This is a Reynolds number of around 10 to the 6. And previously, we still had a laminar boundary layer, at least on the front side of the object. Now we've formed a turbulent boundary layer, which actually wraps around the entire object. It's not shown very well in this figure. But you have a turbulent boundary layer around the entire object, and for some reason, that stabilizes the boundary layer. It stabilizes the boundary layer and it also stabilizes the wake of the object. So you get compression of your turbulent wake and um, you actually get this sudden decrease in your coefficient of drag. And again, a streamlined object in this region would have a much lower coefficient of drag because that turbulent wake would only be uh, impinging on a small portion of the object and you'd have a much smaller, much narrower turbulent wake.